think around 2004, I sent my first uh, open source contribution to the Linux kernel. I shaved so you, you can't see, you know, the gray hair, but I was hired by Red Hat. So that's how my career actually started. My goal was like, how do I become as best as I can as, as a programmer, uh, which I believe I mostly failed, <laughs> but just in, in some sense. I mean, but like, how, how do I get to like the upper echelons of, of this? And I just did this for 10 years. In 2013, I joined their startup. Uh, as employee number three. So that was my first uh, experience as like a startup person. That's Scylla. When Scylla started, I stayed with them for almost eight years. It was my co-founder and I just wanted to start a company. And we had investors already like ready to invest. Uh, again, we did have a reputation and all, but we didn't have a product or, or anything like that. Uh, and despite, again, despite my intention being staying at Datadog for a lot longer, uh, I just saw the opportunity. The money was there. And I said, hey, look, let, let's do it. Uh, and here we are. Describe people today what Turso is and where it's going now in 2024? SQLite in production is the best way. The time for SQLite has come for a variety of reasons. I come from this background at Scylla where we we're talking about petabytes of data and billions of queries a second and, and et cetera. Uh, but when you go talk to most companies, like if they have a lot of, they, they, will, they will say, can Turso handle my data? I have a lot of data. How much data do you have? Like I have like hundreds of gigabytes. It's not, there's not a lot of data. My hard SQLite is not great for writes. Can you handle my workload? My, my workload is write heavy. Oh, awesome. Uh, tell me more. Like, let's put this in numbers. I write to the database almost every second. This is not write heavy. It's the, the, the real write heavy workloads, log ingesting or anything like that. You're writing to the database hundreds of millions per second. And it's extremely easy. Uh, it's probably the best developer experience you've ever had because you can start with just a file. Uh, and it's extremely fast. Uh, and because it because of we can offer you a service that is extremely cheap. So there are many advantages of using SQLite as your main database. But again, using SQLite in production is super hard because it's just a file. So what do you do if you want to uh, have another API server calling to the same database? If it's just a file, right? What do you do? Uh, what do you do if you want to do backups? What, what do you do if you want to scale this out? What, what about fault tolerance if, if your API server dies? What if your application is serverless? Where do you put the damn file, right? Uh, so what we want to do is like plug the gap of those things. And again, we're doing this through the fork that we have. What are the things that you can do to now make sure that SQLite can be your main database, can be used for production, for your serious applications, like for the stuff that really moves the needle? We believe that the answer is yes. Uh, it can be used for that. And we, we are the company that want to make it happen, right? One of the beautiful things about SQLite, the driver itself is the database. I haven't set up a database. I haven't put up a server. I have done absolutely nothing. The database is now part of my code. It's a library. Uh, and I just called it and it's there. Right? The database itself is a file. So this file was created. I can come here and like SQLite tree podcast DB, select star from podcasts. This is a local file, right? You can code it in a way that you're reading from your local file uh, every time. So you're now reading in microseconds, but every change that, that happens in the server, like if you have multiple writers and et cetera, like oh, if you have multiple API servers, everything that happens on the server, you, you, you replicate your local file, which is again, something that lots of people find mind blowing because you don't have that uh, capability in standard SQLite. You can create 500 databases for free. So you can come here, say create DB2, and there you go, another database and DB3, DB4, and you keep creating databases as, as many as you want. Uh, so you can actually just call an API as well to create the database for you. So you can you can have a system where a user logs in, it's a new user, you create a database just for that user, and then the user can do whatever they want with this database. Since I have a database per user anyway, just let the user do SQL, let the user control the schema, let the user do whatever they want. So you, you can create like a database per tenant, a database per session, you can, you, can, you can create a database in less than a second. You can delete a database in less than a second. So those things can be very ephemeral. I can, I can come and show you a little bit more of the CLI. Druso uh, DB list is going to show me a list of all of my databases. And then as I said, like, uh, just, uh, uh, you can have as many of them as you want. Uh, and, and we have a, we have a web interface as well. That if, if you go to turso.tech slash app, uh, you have, uh, your visual management of the databases over there. Uh, so this is Turso. Just the insane amount of databases that we can create. If you come here to our pricing page, you see like uh, we allow people to create up to 10,000 databases already on 29. You can do database branching. Uh, you can access this from serverless. You can do point in time restore, automatic backups. So all, all of this kind of stuff that you will need to run a production database is done by us. 
every time the primogen would mention Brazil in his stream, people would go crazy. Say, hey, come to Brazil, come to Brazil, come to Brazil. We would love to have you here. A very good relationship with him. He talked about us on stream many times. And then one day he put a tweet out that just said, just had the word Brazil. Yeah. That guy's a genius, man. Like this is just a, it takes it to the next level. Like this thing about engagement, just put the word out there. And then he had 160,000 views. At that moment, I said, "Not nah, like I, I asked him. I said, Look, if if I if I find a way for you to go to Brazil, can, you want to go? Do you want to come?" Initially, he was a bit resistant, but I think at, with with time, over time, he saw like how cool this could be. He gave me the okay. We said, "Yeah, let, let's just do it." So we partner with one of our customers that is from Brazil, which is a company we like a lot uh, called Asion. They do amazing work. They do a lot of like uh, edge compute as well, the real stuff, edge compute. So I called their CEO and said, "Hey, look, uh, I'm, you want to help me with this?" They say, yeah, sure, let, let's do it. And that's how this whole thing was born.